Sir Oliver Lodge was born on the 12th of June, 1851. He was to become one of the most important scientific figures of the 20th century and one of the forefathers of radio signal development, loudspeaker technology and the electromagnetic devices our world is now dominated by. What few people know is that his scientific dedication to the energy forces we cannot see in our physical world was also his inspiration and fascination that led him into the ethereal. He was one of the most dedicated and hard-working scientists of his time in the scientific study of psychical research. His belief in an ethereal domain was questioned many times, but he never relented, and amazingly it is now in the 21st century as the confines of relativity being the be-all and end-all of physical and spiritual existence is in serious debate. The same questions are being asked again. Things that were once thought inconceivable by a two-dimensional scientific community but were championed by Sir Oliver Lodge, Tesla and others in their pioneering ability to ponder the unknown are now being validated on a daily basis. Things of genuine interest and in such a way that it would be, for most people who listen, a, a great um, inspiration and a great help. But of course we must always come up against this business of identity, proof of identity. And this becomes increasingly difficult for a well-known personality, a well-known person. And um, I can't for the life of me see what one can do about it. Of course, some people say, well, why do they bother to give their names? It doesn't really matter, this is what they say, and of course we agree with that. But we know that even so, living in a material world such as yours, uh, that often, even if a person may not be able to accept the identity of the person, if the context of the message is such that it holds one's attention and uh, gives one uh, something very real to think about, something that is valuable, and if the conversation is such that it inspires the individuals who listen to want to know more about this subject, in other words, if it does good, uh, then of course it is more than worthwhile. And therefore we do allow certain entities and terms to come to you, then full well the proof of that identity is very remote, it's going to be very difficult to prove uh, from the material point of view. But what we are concerned with is not so much in a sense the personality. In fact, the individual concerned may not care two, two pennies whether you accept them as that person or not. Indeed, quite often they prefer not to give their name. But because we know that the curiosity value, apart from anything else, of individuals on your side, that they are prepared often to listen to someone who claims to be a certain personality. In other words, you see, it does open the door which might sometimes be shut. It does do a great deal of good, even if they don't accept the, or cannot understand or accept the uh, individual, or I'm not sure if it's that individual. It's a message, tarried, with the personality, for instance, also in the context of the message is such that it makes the individuals concerned who listen seriously interested and want to find out more, then of course we are not wasting time, we're doing a good job. Yeah. But it uh, must be very distressing at times when you who have such faith sometimes come up against this complex situation when people say to you afterwards, oh yes, it's very interesting, but how do you know it was that and so? It doesn't say any evidence, any evidence to support it. Then again, uh, for instance, supposing it is rain again, now I ask you, what possible evidence could the man give to prove his identity? I know you can say, oh, yes, well, he'd sound like a statesman, and uh, one would expect him to have a very fine speaking voice and carry a great deal of weight and so on, but that isn't sufficient evidence, the average materialistic minded person. But you cannot prove that, as I see it. Um, for instance, the reality of the fact that it might be this, or would be this rare, uh, because there's really nothing that you could go on. He might tell you a lot of things about his personal life, his material life, but all this, of course, could be taken from books or could be checked up through books and so on and so on. So, 
it, it is a big problem in that sense. But then again, because a person is famous on earth, there's no reason why they should not be allowed to come back and communicate. You see, there are some people who say, oh, well, we don't want to communicate with people like that unless we can prove their identity. But I'm afraid there are some things, even in this great truth, that you must take on faith. If I think the main thing is this, and I think people should accept this as a, a real answer to this problem, that is a medium that has been used for many years and has provided over that period of time innumerable tests in regard to communication from various relations of people who've been able to verify and uh, definitely be assured that these things are factual. In other words, well, there is no reason to think uh, that there should be impersonation or that there should be individuals coming through claiming to be what they are not. The point is that even medium's mediumship has over a long period of time been substantiated possibly by thousands of people in regard to their own personal communication. There's no reason to doubt when someone comes whose name is so well known, whose personality is a personality that in itself is distinct and, and uh, quite individual, there's no reason to doubt that that person is that person. If they cannot supply personal evidence, even if they were to try to do so, which would not necessarily be evidence for the majority of people because so much has been written about the person's concern. The point is that there's no reason to think that the person is not that person. That's a client who usually took over. Is it Dr. Marshall speaking? No. Who is speaking to you? My name is Lodge. Oliver Lodge, Oliver Lodge. Yes. I have always been interested, as you well know, in this yes. tremendous stuff. It's I've been particularly latterly interested in this particular medium because I realize the tremendous value of it. And I have from time to time, not often, but from time to time have come, not often spoken, but I've been present. And I've listened with great interest to what has been said. I realize only too well from the scientific aspect, of course, particularly, that um, this subject, this great truth we call spiritualism and communication will never be fully accepted in your world until we are successful in achieving a method of communication which is purely scientific. That is, I suppose, when the medium is not used at all. Well, this is all very debatable. Whether a man will ever succeed in finding a truly scientific way of communication with our world, in cooperation with our world, I would not like to say at this stage, because I cannot help but feel that whatever method is yours, no matter how successful it may prove to be, even assuming that the vast majority of people were convinced by it, still somewhere you obviously must have mind. You can never cut out. You'll never be able to delete the obvious link of communication, which must always come back to the mind, the mentality, the thought forces that must emanate as they do from our world to yours, even assuming that you manifest uh, the reality of spirit through what is termed a scientific, scientifically accepted instrument. In other words, if man, a scientist or a group of scientists, indeed were trying to help them, even if they build a machine which they will consider to be foolproof, knowing as I do the whole set of circumstances of communication, even assuming that you have this mechanical contrivance or device uh, that will bring forth into your world the thought force and mentality and personality and voice of the manifesting spirit, I am quite convinced that certain scientists, particularly or those of scientific mind, and even though they have created the machine, will still have that doubts. 
I, I do not feel myself that it will ever be possible to create a scientific instrument that will be completely and absolutely successful on a purely scientific basis. Because somewhere, obviously, you must have the mentality of individuals. You must have the thought forces. These conditions which so many scientists would apply to mediumship in your world cannot, in my opinion, prove successful from the point of view of our making communication. I mean, in the old days, of course, it was a common practice to vote the medium in the chair and so on, and we won't go into all that, but you know the sort of things that happened, uh, which proved reality of spirit communication to some, far from, from proving it to all. And indeed, when results were obtained under what were considered strict test conditions, there were always those who differed, and always those who said, well, it could have been trickery, it could have been done in this way or that way. They'd always bring out some sort of hypothesis of something that was achieved by methods which were not honest. Now, of course, in the world you have infrared telescopes that can see what is transpiring in the dark infrared photography. You have all manner of scientific and electrical devices. Uh, some I think which have been used on this medium, but it still does not satisfy. I know myself as a scientist. I know my own breed. I know my own peoples. There are certain mentalities and certain individuals who, because of the very fact of their scientific knowledge and experience, and because of other reasons for which it's perhaps best to say nothing, will not be prepared to come out wholeheartedly, even when the evidence is so strong, will not have come out wholeheartedly on the side of spiritual communication and psychical research. Really, in a sense, I think one might truthfully say that you cannot completely and wholly find conviction of this truth on purely scientific material grounds, because this, after all, is a thing of the mind and of the spirit. This is the reality of man. This is the true man. It is the true power of the spirit of man. It is something away and beyond material things, no matter how far science evolves, even assuming that he no doubt will reach the moon or other planets, even if they land on the planets or certain planets, even though they set up stations they were still, strangely enough, no matter how much man progresses in space, no matter how much he learns about the power of thought and the transmission of thought, I still think for many people there will be doubts and uncertainties about the life that is to come. Because they will not want their deep-rooted convictions and ideas and ideals and opinions and all that that means in a material sense to them, they won't want that altered. They won't want the change. You see, there are, in your world, as you well know, some very, very powerful organizations, well-meaning, but dull, and afeard of advancement, spiritual truth, and its true advancement in regard to humanity. They would like to think, and perhaps in themselves, some of them are very sincere, would like to think that their minds are open to receive, but they are not, I regret to say. And this applies not just to scientists, but it applies to many people who are blinded and prejudiced by their religious convictions. And I think, and I maintain this, 
that their biggest problem is not going to be so much with the scientists who do approach whatever one may feel about them individually or collectively do approach things as best they can with an open mind they very seldom have very strong preconceived ideas they may have uh, certain theories with which they will naturally work upon and they may sometimes indeed they quite often do uh, in regard to this truth anyway they look for the black side rather than for the better they're much more concerned to, to find out the trickeries and of course in the sense they're quite well justified but I'm more concerned with the power of religious organizations and bodies who have always been fundamentally the enemy of any true spiritual advancement. Anything that goes against them or their ideas, their strong ideas and opinions formulated over a long period of history, whenever there has been anything that would in any way interfere or stand in their way or cause people to doubt what they think and what they believe, or indeed anything that was, that they saw it in opposition, they would of course come out in force against it. Fortunately, the days of the torture chamber and the days of the Inquisition are over. But there are many ways in which a powerful religious organization can suppress. And of course they still do. And it is a terrible thing to think that man, in his ignorance of truth, does everything in his power to suppress truth. Mm -hmm. It isn't only in the Christian church, of course. You can find it in other religions, other groups. When there are great banded together organizations, they are very powerful. And though they profess to be spiritually strong and powerful, unfortunately they are often much more materially powerful, materially strong. That is the idiosyncrasy of the whole business. The strong so-called spiritually bonded groups and organizations of religious persuasion are quite often much more materially bonded together and materially powerful either when in fact in financial aspect as well as in numbers and in power in the material sense in such a way that they can and they do suppress the truth. Although I must say that since my death there has been a great advancement. There has been a lot of doors, there have been a lot of doors opened and uh, I think that there is a greater acceptance of this truth by the general public. I think there's a greater awareness, greater curiosity, a greater desire to know. And I think that we shall, indeed I know that we shall make tremendous progress. And I am convinced that there will be scientific methods discovered gradually of communication. I, I think that we are on the threshold of great discoveries. But I still say, and I still maintain, that no matter how scientific the approach and the success of the experiment or experiments, there will always be doubting Thomases, and there will always be, of course, the realization that you can never completely do without a form of mediumship. I think the human element must always play a part, because we are dealing with human beings who long since have left your world, who fundamentally are of the mind and of the spirit, and therefore you cannot obliterate in communication the mind and the power of the spirit. For after all, all communication is in the spiritual nature in as much that they are spiritual beings that are trying to communicate with you, and that whatever method they may use or apply, it is a mental process that must obviously be used. I want to speak to you, I must think of the things I wish to say. In this instance, the voice box that is constructed from the, from the ectoplasmic substance drawn chiefly from the medium that is built up into this room, uh, which makes it possible for me to transmit my thoughts via that to you, coming to your sound, vibrating the atmosphere, but fundamentally it is and must be 
the mentality, the thought force emanating from the individual, in this case myself, from this side. And of course you must remember that there is a whole group of body and souls, and quite often working together as they do, in a band, all supporting the one person who's making the communication at that moment, in that moment of time to you. There must be, at times, difficulties, and there must be at times occasions when the transmission in thought force coming to your sound is a little perhaps muddled or sometimes incoherent. There are many complications in communication and people should realize this. The success that we achieve, I sometimes think, is remarkable. And how much more we shall hope to do, uh, we want to do so much more. But we realize that we have many, many obstacles to overcome yet. I know there will always be people that will say, oh, I don't accept that, no matter how marvelous the communication. Um, the drink was not all As you said, there must be a mind for communication, and you cannot find a mind for material instruments. Fundamentally, yes. I mean, uh, of course, there are many, for instance, in your world today, uh, things that you take your tape recorder. Yes. I mean, it is fantastic that, 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 that uh, a voice of an individual can be placed on that tape and it can be played back and everyone can hear it identically mm -hmm. to, to what it was at the time of it being recorded. But then again, you know that that is not the person speaking. Yeah. You see, what I'm trying to convey here is that you could put that tape recorder in a room in the dark without anyone else knowing about it switch it on and people in the next room or even the people in that room say oh I can hear voices speaking in there that sounds like so so and they recognize the voice and they, uh, the only thing is that you can't answer questions I mean that tape will only play back identically what has been re reproduced on it it won't answer any question that you may ask of it there's no mind there there's no mind there you see what I want to convey is that we are transmitting thoughts. But behind the thoughts is the mind of the individual and the personality and the characteristic of that individual all merging through, as best we can put it through, into your world, vibrating your atmosphere, recreating artificially. And I think one must always remember this, that it is artificially recreation of our personality and our thoughts. And I don't suppose that we shall ever successfully convince every individual. But we shall, and I think the evidence is so overwhelming, we shall convince the majority of clear-minded thinking people who are seeking on the right level of thought, if they are seeking for spiritual, a spiritual truth, if they are anxious for the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit, that will come to them. It will be brought to them. They will be made conscious and aware of it. They will receive that personal evidence that will substantiate the claims that we make. But there will always be and must be the human element. And when we realize the complexity of the communication, we realize the human element being as it is human. There will be failure. There will be times when we are not successful, when we are not able to convince, when people, for various reasons on both sides, cannot become and rapport together. You see, communication, if it is to be successful, must be a combination of like mind. It must be a combination of sincerity of purpose among the peoples concerned. We on this side and you on yours. It must be, as it were, a complete coordination. It must be something that is desired, something that is wanted in the highest possible sense by all the individuals that are working towards that end. In other words, it is an experiment in which all concerned play a part. We on this side, the medium that is used, and the people who, like yourselves, turn the sitters. When there is a complete cooperative effort under the conditions as best they can be ideal, then we more or less are assured of success. But you must remember that the vast majority of people who make communication or endeavor communication, particularly coming from your side, are quite often 
without perhaps fully realizing it, building barriers, making it much more difficult, uh, much more complex than it should be. We don't ask for people to come to accept everything that we may give them as gospel truth. Of course, we do say that which is true and sincere from within ourselves. We do not come and tell you a pack of nonsense, but at the same time, it is important for the individuals to realize that are endeavoring to find truth that not only must they come with an open, clear mind, ready to receive truth, we do not ask them to to put behind them their own common sense, although there again, what is common sense? Common sense doesn't necessarily in the sense apply to something like this, because the average person's common sense, purely materialistic as it must be on a material plane, cannot necessarily grasp this which is far beyond the common. We want people to enter into this truth, seeking truth with an open mind and an open heart, cooperating as best they can to the best of their ability, making it possible for us to link with them in, in the right way, a way in which we know we can achieve success. Because we don't ask you to be nink and poops and accept everything as gospel. We expect you to use that common sense that you have. But if you receive something that does not make sense, or does not seem at the moment to be acceptable. We don't necessarily think that you should discard it. We should say, put it in reserve. It may be that at some later date, that which makes no sense at the moment may become a real thing to you in the future. In other words, we only ask that all those who are working towards this end to find truth and to know truth and to understand truth shall in themselves be truthful shall in themselves be honest, shall in themselves be open-minded and open-hearted, and that they shall have only that which is good at heart, and knowing our complication and difficult communication, will make those alliances which are necessary under these often difficult conditions that we must function in. We do our best. We only ask for those in your world will be as cooperative as they possibly can. But we do not ask you in that being cooperative that you should cast away your common sense but at the same time realize that this is not necessarily an easy thing always to prove particularly in, in certain instances and under certain circumstances it is our task to prove identity it is our task to prove survival but it is your task having discovered it and found its reality, to put it into practice in your daily lives and to spread this truth wherever you go because your world is in, in such need of this and more and more now than it's ever, ever needed in the past. We all send our blessings to you.